I shared a 3D carousel the other day and a lot of people wanted me to make a tutorial on it. Now, I have not forgotten about the second part of the animated titles video, but that is a video that I think will take a little bit longer to record. So in this video, we'll create a 3D carousel and I'll show you a couple of things that I experimented with and then I'll show you how to create this whole thing from scratch. While making this video, I also got an idea to create an actual tool for these. So if that's something that's interesting for you, let me know that in the comments and I'll see if I can put some time into it so that you can create these type of things a lot faster and more efficiently in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get to the video. Okay, now let me just quickly show you what I did at first to try to make this work, but didn't quite work. First of all, because I have the 3D rise right here that we can just use from the edit page. What I did here was that I used these and just created this rotation. So my idea was like, okay, if we do these and then we just put the same thing, stack it on top of different clips, then we can just make this work like that, right? Because like, because the clip is still like in front of it. Well, that only happens for half of it. The moment these one right here turns to be in the front, doesn't work anymore because this one is on top. So if you wanted to do it this way, you could make it work this way, but you have to like, flip things out and maybe color code these uh, to make these work properly, right? So then it would have to be something like these. And now that one is um, that one is coming accurately from like behind it. But then we still have to do the same thing for this one right here. So we have to like do these and maybe put this right here. And then we have to make sure that this one is actually behind the other one right here and cut it again. So yeah, it's a whole mess that I thought it was gonna work better. Okay, so then I ended up doing this. I stacked all the media together as a fusion clip, basically like this. And then I opened that in fusion because I did I wanted to see if that worked. All right, so we have the media right here and I actually used the 3D rise itself here as well. And I just input the media here for for it to work in that sense like we were when i show you how the process i'm gonna show you from scratch because this is sort of like an optional step i was already testing the 3d rise for these and then i thought okay let me just try to build it with these one as well right but in the end it's sort of like an unnecessary step it's just overcrowding things like with these bender node and stuff like that so we're gonna just start these from scratch but this is what it looks like in the 3d space pretty simple to be honest okay let me just start so that we don't waste more time. Okay, so I said I'm gonna show you the process from scratch, so that's what we're gonna do. First of all, we're gonna stack the images that we have right here. And I'm gonna do that a couple of times. If all your images aren't the same size, that's probably gonna, that probably is gonna be something that makes things easier, like, okay. All right, so we have the images stack right here. We can close this media pool. And I'm gonna right click, selecting them, and then create a new fusion clip up here. If you wanna rename these, you can just go to file and then rename these right here. Like, after we have these ready, if you want these to be longer, you can just adjust this by opening these in timeline view right here, and then just make things longer. Otherwise, that's gonna be the cap, the limit. Now open these in Fusion and we have these all these media ends right here. We can bring these background on right here, but we're not going to use that right now. And then we can just delete these. We're going to add one 3D plane for each of these. And now we're going to connect all of these to the Merge 3D node. This Merge 3D node, we can already add a renderer and then connect that render to our media out right here. Now, don't worry about these. We can adjust the size of these a little bit later as well. So you can add a transform 3D node right here if you want to adjust the overall position of things and the size as well. Now, one thing that we need is the actual masks for each of these media ends. Now, a few of these have a different resolution or actually they're all in the same resolution, but the size of these is a little bit smaller of these ones, I guess. But since we are working with the mask, I think it should be fine to have the same one for all of them. We're gonna test that out for a little bit. So I'm gonna do these, 
make the round the corners a little bit more rounded and then connect these to the media end. Let me see. I think for this media end, the size will be a little bit different, maybe. Let me just tell you something that I've been thinking about this past few days and weeks, probably. For this 2025, editing is one of those things that you want to be able to be as efficient as possible because there's just so many things that you can do with it. Every day there's new techniques or whatever, but there are things that if you work for clients or if you actually make money making videos or editing videos, a lot of times those things are a little bit repetitive because they're not like completely just in the creative in the creative side of like creating VFX and stuff like that. The tools that I built are basically to help you navigate those type of things. So let me just mention this Wobbly bundle, which is the collection of tools that I've created over the past few years that you can get at an extremely low and affordable price. I set it up to be this price so that everybody in the world can get it. If you can edit in DaVinci Resolve, and like if you have a computer that edits in DaVinci Resolve, then you most likely can afford these. Now, the actual time that you save is unlimited after these. So if you work on one client project, that investment is already paid off. And then the cool thing is that you keep getting updates for free on any of the things that I update over the next few years. So if you want to be a little bit more efficient in your editing in 2025, make sure to check out bundle.swabi.com. All right, let's continue with the video. Now, if you want to adjust the position of your actual media in right here, you would have to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to need to create a few more things and that will make these a little bit messier. But is what you need to do to make this work. So let's say we want to adjust the position of our cap, but we don't want to break that center rectangle that we have right here. We can add this background over here. Make sure this one is set to background. Make this transparent. Now on this merge node is where we're going to connect our mask. And then this media in will have to have its own transform node. Like that. I'm going to set this up like this for now. And now we can actually adjust the position of our media in like that. So yeah, if you already have your image or your element center, then that's not a big deal. So you don't have to do this process, but that is a process that you have to do if you want to adjust the position without breaking our mask right here. So if we take a look at it in the 3D space, we have these. Well, one of them is not being affected by the mask, it seems. That's weird. What is going on right here? Let me copy this mask and set it up individually. There it goes. Sometimes if the mask breaks, just copy and paste that individually right there just to fix that for now. Uh, things just get bugged out sometimes. All right, we have these in place. Now, the first thing that we need to do is position things in the correct space. So for that, that's when I the S gone comes into place. Now, we cannot really connect this into the 3D space unless we use an extrusion node, which is this one. Now, that will allow, the, allow us to connect this to the 3D space and now we can see the gun as well. Now, for the sides, you need to set up the same side as the amount of images that you have or carousel elements. In this case, is five. So we're going to set this to five. And now on the extrude section, we're going to go to transform and rotate the X value to 90 degrees. Now, you have to make sure that the main point or the main yeah, it's called a point, I think, or vertices of this hexagon or pentagon that we have right here is pointing towards the camera. So we start that as first. So we're going to click the quad view and now we can go to the top view, press control G if you want to sort of like have some sort of center guide. But this line that right here already works to align things. So then we can rotate the Y value a little bit until we see that it's in the correct place. And if it's not perfect, it's probably not that big of a deal. Okay, this is what we're gonna use to adjust the position of our images. So we're gonna select the first 3D plane right here that we have for the first image. And now with the Merge 3D view, we can just bring these in front, 
and try to match these to that point that we have on the S and S and gun. Now, if you want to make the space between them a little bit bigger, then we can just adjust the extrude uh, shape scale like this. And now you can adjust the shape again. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for this other one. Position these in place right there. And do these for all of them. The important thing is to make sure that that square or the point or center point is right at the same edge or this vertices of the pentagon that we have right here. If you want these to be properly aligned as well, just make sure to copy that same, in this case would be the Z value. And then for the fourth image, we're going to set that, that same number. And now we can put this on this side. And we can actually just do these, copy, and then make sure to paste that same number. But make these positive. And we have that. So we're going to do the same thing for this one. So we're going to go to the first one. Copy the Z value, paste this, and now go back, copy the X value, and we're gonna go and set this up to be the positive value. Well, that's not to that one, but to the image plane that we have right here. Now all of them are aligned. After you have that in place, you can get rid of these extrude 3D and we can start by using the Merge 3D to animate the rotation. We just do that and it will rotate. So we're going to set up the Y value to be the first one at zero. And then we're going to do 48 frames, so two seconds, because I think this is a 24 frames per second timeline. And now we're going to go to, I think it would have to be maybe negative 72 degrees, because you have to do... 360 divided by 5 because that's why we have five images. Yeah, 72. So it'll have to be negative 372. One thing I didn't take into account is yeah, I think our shape was in the middle or the, the middle of the extrude pentagon is also the pivot point that we have here for the merge node right here. Because if we change the pivot point, this whole thing will change as well. So yeah, we're good in that end. All right, now that we have these in place, what we need to do for the images is animate the Y rotation as well. But we're just going to copy this merge node, press Ctrl C, and we're going to go to this one and say, and then in here, we're going to right click and then paste these settings. But we're going to set these to be the positive 72. Then after you have that ready, take a look at how the screen is always looking forward. You could create an expression for these but it's very easy to just leave it to be as keyframes for now. All right, we're gonna copy these settings for the rotation. So we're gonna paste the group settings as well for all the elements that we have. Now, if we take a look, they rotate like that. So to make these a little bit more impactful, we're gonna select all of these Actually, you can delete this if you want, because we're not really using that. I'm going to select all the images and also the merge node because all of those have keyframes. Select everything, fit to screen, and now we can press F and play around with the ease in and out values to make these a little bit more interesting. All right, and now we don't want to have to create all the keyframes after these again, right? So what you can do is go right here and there's these icon that's set that is called or is named set relative if you click that then that whole thing will just continue until the end unless you create a new keyframe so let's say we want this to go all the way back so we have five images so they need they need to do uh five spins so we have these right here two three four five now the easiest way to do this is actually just go to frame 48 multiply this by five and then we're back at the beginning so right here we can actually just if you click this at relative it will end but we can actually just 
I think if we copy these initial keyframe, let me see. It's not gonna let me do that right now. Okay, now these set to relative, we need to actually click or create a new key from right here for these to get cut and start over. So we're just gonna do that. Okay, so ignore the thing about the, now if, ignore the thing that I mentioned about creating the last keyframe because for some reason it restarts every, every, I guess you could call this scene right here for every, every new rotation. If we add that last keyframe, it just gets for some reason buggy and just restarts this from, from that first initial image again. So just ignore that for now. All right. So if we press two right here, we can see the carousel is already working, but if you want to make this a little bit more interesting, you can actually play with this trans transform node and then maybe add a little bit of a rotation angle for it to be like these, maybe uh, get it a little bit higher, smaller. Like that, if it is like that, then we can actually go and set up the relative of all these images to be a little bit different. So 23, I think if we set up these X, for example, to be negative 23, then it will be flat again, but we have then all these images have a little bit more of like appearance in like in the background, you can see all of them instead of just three in the front, right? So that's one one other adjustment that you can do. So it adds a little bit of an effect of it, a little bit more depth to the animation. So you can see how it's working right there. Now, the last thing you can do here, if you want is to add a drop shadow, you can do that here or in the edit page if you want, and just decrease the drop distance, maybe a little bit, the drop angle, make sure to do it whatever you like and then the blur and the strength a little bit as well. So if we go back to the edit page and add this background, maybe we can see them looking like that. All right, so in the edit page, this is what it looks like. We have this 3D carousel doing the movement that a 3D carousel is doing, showing the images. Now, if you want to add other animations or like mix things up, maybe start like, like a transition from one image, they become a carousel, and then there's a, another image that pops up and goes to the next scene. That's a little bit more complicated and you and that will require to create a few more keyframes for it to work properly. And I think the set relative might break if we do that. So we have to create these keyframes from scratch, but I can show you that in a future video if it is something that, if it is something that you want to create. So that is how we can create this 3D carousel. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I got the idea of creating a tool for these. So if you want me to make sure to leave a comment because I need more comments to be in the comment section. If I want to reach to 10K followers, maybe the YouTube algorithm will start pushing my videos more after I do that. <laughs> but I think it's not going to be that complicated to build. So stay on the lookout for that and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to also give it a like before you leave. Bye.